my channel or welcome back to my channel my name is Andy sometimes mouse and I talk about books and book related things and today I am giving you my April TBR I have this totally written out and then my friends just like randomly dropped that they're doing sapphic September but they're doing it in spring they're doing sapphic spring and it's their first mini readathon and then I had to redo my TBR luckily luckily they mentioned that before I filmed this because I was gonna film this yesterday and then I didn't and they talked about it yesterday like before anyway this worked out great. Hi, hello. Let's talk about my April t my April TBR. It's fucking long. I'm just gonna like warn you now. This shit is long. It's gonna take two takes. I already know, not two takes. We're gonna have to like stop halfway through and then like change camera batteries and or let my camera cool off because sometimes it gets too hot. So cool. Anyway, we're gonna start with series continuations. We're just gonna like jump right in. I am gonna split this up into like things that I'm reading, like into. Category. There's categories, all right? Don't worry about it. Anyway, uh, first up, we have series continuations and we have Pocket Apocalypse by Shauna McGuire. This is the fourth encrypted book in the encrypted book series. Uh, it This one is about Alexander Price, who is the brother of Verity Price. And um, it's, it's just, it's a continuation of a series. It is the fourth book. I am not gonna get into what it's about because you probably should read the other books before before that but the book series is really good and I recommend it so uh, and then we have book six in the Sandman comic collection by Neil Gaiman this is the sixth book in a comic book series and I'm gonna get super far into it I've really enjoyed the comics and it's been a lot of fun so I'm gonna keep reading it also it's on Kindle Unlimited I think all but like the third book are on Kindle Unlimited or is it Comixology I think it's Kindle Unlimited I think I only pay for Kindle Unlimited so and I'm gonna cancel that when I finish this after I finish the series probably anyway uh then we have Only Ashes Remain by Rebecca Schaefer this is the Market of Monsters series it is the second book uh the first book I read for my support women's wrongs video at the recommendation of my friend Lexi and it was really really good I enjoyed it a lot uh this is the continuation of that story as Nita and um her friend partner guy have escaped the black market that was attempting to sell them because they are monsters. Uh, they want to essentially make themselves feared so that they are no longer targets. We'll see how that goes for them. <laughs> then we have the last book in the uh, Five Nights at Freddy's trilogy that I'm currently reading, which is The Fourth Closet by Scott Cawthorn. Th again, this is the last book. It is about uh, Charlie, well, rather, what happened to Charlie. Charlie allegedly, like, died and then reappeared, and it was weird and crazy, and what's happening, and what's up with these animatronics, so on and so forth. It's Five Nights at Freddy's. There's a thousand lore videos. It will probably talk about the books. And then next we have This Cursed Light by Emily Feed. I will likely reread the first book as well, which I have up on the bookshelf. It's that yellow one. It's like the only yellow one up there that you can see. Uh, I don't remember. This Blessed Grace? I don't know what the first one's called. But uh, This Cursed Light, Light by Emily Feed is the sequel. It is six months. It's set six months after the island was destroyed. Um, and Alessa is like continuing to try and figure out like her own powers and the gods and all of these things. And it's kind of um, young adult political fantasy romance E. I enjoyed the first book a lot when I initially read it, uh, but that was back in 2021. So when I read it again, I might not like it, <laughs> but I am going to read the sequel because I feel like I've been waiting for the sequel for quite a while. Uh, and if I remember correctly, I was fine with the way that the first book ended. I don't think I necessarily felt like a second book was necessary, but I could be wrong. So there's that. That is it though for series continuations. I'm just knocking those left and right out of the park. Uh, I I really want this year to focus on finishing a lot of the series that I already have going and not starting too many new ones until those are done. So next up we have my everything else that isn't in a specific category. It is the uncategorized category which for the most part is books that have been on that like list of books where I put everything in all of my TBRs. I wrote them all down and these books are essentially in that list because uh, I'm trying to get through them through the year. 
First up, we have Ice Guts Throat Bones by Maura Fowley. This is a short story collection of horror writing by this author that I really enjoy. And that's it. Then we have Mothered by Zoja Stage. I really like Zoja Stage's thrillers, and also you'll probably notice in a minute that I kind of have a theme here uh, for, for motherhood thriller books, I guess. Grace isn't exactly thrilled when her newly widowed mother, Jackie, asks to move in with her. Living with mother isn't for everyone. Grace starts having nightmares about her disabled twin sister who died when they were kids, and Jackie discovers that Grace secretly catfishes people online, a hobby Jackie thinks is unforgivable, and I think is kind of funny. When Jackie makes an earth-shattering accusation against her, Grace sees it as an act of revenge, and it sends her spiraling into a sleep-deprived madness. As the walls close in, the ghosts of Grace's past collide with a new but familiar threat. Mom. I think it's interesting that mother and mom are used here and both of them have capital M's like these are significant naming conventions for her parent. Uh, I think that's interesting and suspicious. I'm very excited to see what this is about. Next up we have The Push by Ashley Aldrain. I actually had somebody that I only kind of vaguely and loosely know uh, recommend this to me while I was getting tattooed so We'll see how that goes. Uh, Blythe Connor is determined that she will be the warm, comforting mother to her new baby Violet that she herself never had. But in the thick of motherhood's exhausting early days, Blythe becomes convinced that something is wrong with her daughter. She doesn't behave like most children do. Or is it all in Blythe's head? Her husband, Fox, his name is Fox, says she's imagining things. The more Fox dismisses her fears, the more Blythe begins to question her own sanity, and the more we begin to question what Blythe is telling us about her life as well. Then her, their son Sam is born, and with him, Blythe has the blissful connection she'd always imagined with her child. Even Violet seems to love her little brother. But when life as they know it is changed in an instant, the devastating fallout forces Blythe, forces Blythe to face the truth. I know a little bit about the plot of the book, but my memory is so bad that it means I don't know a lot, which means that's more fun for me. Next up, we have Counting the Cost by Jill Duggar. This is going to be my nonfiction book of the month. Uh, this is the story of Jill Duggar going through being on 19 Kids and Counting on TLC. She is still Christian, but I think she also kind of mm, in, di like, uh, disentangles some of her faith and original beliefs and the things that she was raised to believe. And I think that it'll be interesting to read as someone who's deconstructed their faith. Uh, I think I think it'll be interesting. Also, as somebody who watched 19 Kids and Counting, but not as in-depth as a lot of people did. So next up, we have Pandora's Jar by Natalie Haynes. This is uh, by Natalie Haynes. Uh, Haynes essentially discusses and I'm a little bit unsure. This has been on my list for a long time, and I'm a little bit unsure about the layout of this book. I genuinely don't know. Uh, but it seems like she's kind of shifting or revolutionizing is what it says here. Some of our epic, like epic poem stories and plays um, from Greek mythology. And I think these are like, these are these are gonna be retellings. Um, but I also don't know if this is also written more like a discussion rather than a retelling like, oh, what if this was more like this? just in a conversational format? I don't know. I think it'll be interesting to see. And it's, again, been on my TBR for a really long time, but I don't know when I put it on there. Like, was it a late night when I couldn't sleep and so I was just perusing through Libby to try and decide on a book that maybe I would listen to that I could go to sleep listening to because I couldn't sleep? I think that's probably what happened. And sometimes I add books on that list that make exactly none sense. This might be one of them. I don't know. We will find out. Like, it still seems interesting, but I, I have no idea why this has been on my TBR. And lastly in this category, we have The 99 Boyfriends of Micah Summers by Adam Sass. Wow, a romance book. Look at me go. Uh, Micah is rich, dreamy, and charming as the Prince of Chicago, the son of local celebrity sports radio host known as the King of Chicago. He has everything going for him. Unfortunately, he's also the prince of imaginary meet cutes since he's too nervous to actually ask boys out. Instead, Michael, Micah draws each crush to share on Instagram with a post about their imaginary dates. 99 Boyfriends Later, his account is hugely popular and everyone is eagerly awaiting boy number 100. So is Micah. He's determined that boy 100 will be different. This time, Micah will sweep the boy off his feet. For real. 
So when Micah flirts with the hot boy on the L who's wearing a vegan leather jacket and lugging a ton of library books, he's sure this is boy 100. But right before he can make his move and ask for the boy's number, the guy rushes off the train, leaving behind his pumpkin embroidered jacket. The jacket holds clues to the boy's identity, so Micah and his friends set off on a quest to return it. Along the way, Micah will discover that the best relationships aren't fairy tales. In fact, the perfect fit and true love might be closer than he thinks. It seems fun. And I like Adam Sass's writing, so I just, I think it seems fun, and that's it. For my, like, I'm gonna make a dedicated video about this series, and I'm not gonna call it 24 Hour Reads, but I don't know what else to call it, book set this month in April is going to be the Heart Striker series by Rachel Aaron. This is the first set of books that came out about the DFC seri DFZ series. Uh, the first book is Nice Dragons Finish Last. These books are about the Heart Strikers family, which they are the, the dragons in DFZ, and it's an urban fantasy, almost with some sci-fi elements to it, series. This one I, is the longest series in the in the collection. The first book, this, this one has four or five books, and then the other two are trilogies. Um, this one is Art's favorite, I think, and then my favorite is Minimum Wage Magic, which I will probably read in May uh, for my for my birthday, and I'll probably talk about them in a video then. But Heart Strikers, Rachel Aaron, I love Rachel Aaron's writing. I have had conversations with Rachel about Rachel's own writing, which is incredible. So, what a time! Anyway, that is pretty much it for my like standard TBR, but I am now going to give you the TBR I have for Sapphic Spring, which is done by the hosts of Sapphic September, my friends Landis and Lexi, and it's because their birthdays are very close together, and so is this readathon. I don't know the exact dates, so editing me is going to have to post them. I know it starts on the 9th. It's like from one person's birthday to the other person's birthday, but like I'm really bad at remembering people's birthdays. Like I know the months, but I don't know the dates. That's where I'm at. I am not doing all of the prompts, which, okay, I don't do readathons first. Second, I only do my own readathon, which means that I write the prompts for that. And so I know books already, like as I'm writing, that fill in the prompts for that. I mean, art writes the prompts, but we like discuss them. Uh, this one, I, I had to like do some digging, look around on like my own TBR and like online for some books that maybe I'd heard of, but had forgotten to put on my TBR, etc., to find things to fill in the prompts for this. Uh, I am skipping a few prompts, like I said, so there's that fair warning. But I'm going to put the graphic. Hopefully Editing Me has already put the graphic here. If so, thank you, Editing Me. You're an angel, an icon, if you will. The first prompt is Sapphic Romance, which is I'm going to be reading The Marble Queen by Anna Kopp. This is a graphic novel, and I had it on my releases for, I think I had it on my 2023 releases I was excited for, and then it didn't come out until 2024. So I have no idea how it made it on the 2023 list, how I even heard about it when it wasn't even coming out until March of this year. But anyway, uh, Princess Amelia's Kingdom, Marion is in shambles after months of their trade routes being ravaged by pirates, and now the only seemingly option left is for her to save it through a marriage alliance. When she gets an exorbitant offer from the royal family of Iliad, a, a country shrouded in mystery, Amelia accepts without question and leaves her home to begin a new life. But she lands on Iliad's shores to find that her betrothed isn't the country's prince, but the recently coronated Queen Salira. Salira? Shocked, Amelia tries to make sense of her situation and her confused heart. Salira has awakened strange new feelings inside her, but something dark hides behind the queen's sorrowful eyes, and Amelia must fight the demons of her own anxiety disorder before she can tackle her wife's, all while war looms on the horizon. It seems cute and emotional and all the things. Next for the prompt flowers on the cover, I will be reading An Education in Malice by S.T. Gibson. Deep in the forgotten hills of Massachusetts stands St. Perpetua's College. Isolated and ancient, it's not a place for timid girls. Here, secrets are currency, ambition is lifeblood, and strange ceremonies welcome students into the fold. On her first day of class, Laura Sheridan is thrust into an intense academic rivalry with beautiful and enigmatic Camilla, Carmilla. Together, they are drawn into the confidence of their demanding poetry professor, De La Fontaine, who holds her own dark obsession with Carmilla. 
But as the rivalry blooms into something, blossoms into something far more delicious, Laura must confront her own strange hungers. Tangled in a sinister game of politics, bloodthirsty professors, and dark magic, Laura and Carmilla must decide how much they are willing to sacrifice in their ruthless pursuit of knowledge. I really like S.T. Gibson's writing, so I'm excited to read this. Uh, I say that, but I've, I've only read the one book, but I'm still excited about it. Moving on. For free space, I will be reading The Invocations by Crystal Sutherland. I was tempted to put this in favorite trope because I think it would have been funny if I just put a horror book in there and been like, my favorite trope is horror. But I think it would have made Lannis and Lexi mad at me, so I didn't do that. You're welcome. I also really like Crystal Sutherland's writing, so this will be a good time. Uh, this is a long descriptor, so I'm just telling you now it's a long descriptor um, because it talks about three characters that are specifically involved in this book. Zara Jones believes in magic because the alternative is too painful to bear, that her sister was murdered by a serial killer and there is precisely nothing she can do to change it. If there's anything Zara cannot stand, it's feeling powerless, so she decides she will do whatever it takes, even if that means partaking in the occult to bring her sister back from the dead. Jude Wolf might be the daughter of a billionaire, but she's also undeniably cursed. After a deal with a demon went horribly wrong, her soul is now slowly turning necrotic. Flowers and insects die in her wake, and monstrous things come to haunt her at night. If Jude can't find the right someone to fix her mistake, she fears she'll die very soon. Enter Emma, Emmer, the solution to both Zara and Jude's predicaments. The daughter of a witch, Emmer sells spells to women in desperate situations, willing to sacrifice a part of their soul in exchange for a bit of power, a bit of magic to change their lives. But Emmer has a dark past all her own, and as her former clients are murdered one by one, she knows it's followed her all the way to London. That just seems crazy. A crazy time, you know? Next up for lesbian main character, I have So Let Them Burn by Camilla Cole. Farron Vincent can channel the power of the gods. Five years ago, she used her divine magic to liberate her island from its enemies, the dragon-riding Langley Empire. But now, at 17, Farron is all powered up with no wars to fight. She's a legend to her people and a nuisance to her neighbors. That's really funny. When she's forced to attend an international peace summit, Farron expects that she will perform tricks like a trained pet and then go home. She doesn't expect her older sister, Alara, forming an unprecedented bond with an enemy dragon, or the gods claiming the only way to break that bond is to kill her sister. As Farron's desperation to find another solution takes her down a dark path, Alara discovers the shocking secrets at the heart of the Langley Empire. Both must make difficult choices that will shape each other's lives as well as the fate of their world. Sad. Also, though, I do love hero post-saving the world kind of kind of vibes, you know? I like those stories. I think they're interesting. And lastly for me, we have Quick Read, and I will be reading a short story collection called Bury Your Gaze, which is written by many authors, but it was edited by Sophia Arjum, uh, Ajram, and Sophia is the owner of the shop where I got my wedding band set, so I feel a kindred spirit. Uh, she actually... Uh, sins, or at least one of my rings came with a little like poetry set situation guy from Cassandra Kachaw who's in this, who wrote in this series. Um, this is a bunch of queer horror stories that are collected and uh, it's listed with, with some sapphic uh, relationships so it still applies into this category. I'm excited about it and have seeing Sophia be excited about it online has also made me excited about it. So that's it. That is the TBR. That is the TBR for Sapphic Spring and the TBR for April as a whole. I am excited and nervous because this is a huge TBR and I may have bit off more than I can chew, but we'll for sure see how that goes. I I think that that's it. I, I think that that's it. Yep. So if you have any of these books that you want to read or you are excited to participate in Sapphic Spring or if it's already started, I don't know what day this video is going up. I don't remember what day what date? So if this is up and Savage Spring has started, are you having fun? And if not, are you going to join? Those are my answers. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and share. It helps me very much. If you didn't enjoy this video, let me know how I can make it better for you. I post videos every Tuesdays and Thursday at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, except for the full first, full first week of the month. And that's it. Don't forget to take your meds, drink your water, and do something today to take care of yourselves. Okay, thanks. Bye.